Hi guys and welcome to Journey to Journeyman episode number 20. On this episode I make a couple of counterweights and a bracket for my son's gimbal. It's when he puts his phone in there, his phone with the case on it is just a little bit too heavy sometimes the way he positions it in there. So with a counterweight on there, the gimbal that he uses can, uh, this can counterbalance the weight of his phone to keep everything nice and steady. Also, I want to thank you so much, all the guys, for all the kind words, the tips and tricks. Thank you so much. And I know that a lot of you guys are fiending for this South Bend, and me too, but I just don't have the tooling yet for it. All I can do is face and turn. So you get to see a little bit of the South Bend on the facing and turning, and then the rest is over on the old Atlas 618. If you want to know how I did that, stick around. And uh, let's take a look at our order of operations. Well, we have a counterweight, and there are really not really any critical dimensions on it. I just want to make sure it's quarter 20. And the same thing with the, uh, the bracket. It uh, will measure from the 3D part. 3D printed part that my son made. Let's take a look at our order of operations. On the counterweight, we'll turn down the round stock, then we'll drill and tap the hole to quarter 20. We'll cut it to length and face it, then we'll polish it to look good. And guys, I forgot to say to cut and make studs and lock tight that into the counterweight. Then we'll move on to the bracket where we'll cut the stock. We'll square it up on the lathe. We'll measure it and lay it out. Machine it to size using the milling attachment. D drill and tap the quarter 20 hole. Then we'll polish it to a gleaming luster. And then we'll slow down that record for the ladies. My son started off with a counterweight using taped up quarters and double stick tape, but I thought we could do better than that. Well, a couple of you real observant guys caught that I had a piece of aluminum chucked up in here. Basically, I took a soup can full of aluminum and wanted to see if it had some porosity in it. And there's a little bit, so I'm going to remelt that and uh, see if I can get some of that porosity out. But anyway, on to this, uh, this new deal. See if I can make this thing for my, my son. I oh, forgot how to turn this thing on. Hi, YouTube. Hi, Dad. Hi, Bud. Love you. Love you, too. Thanks for doing this. Of course. Might have been easier just to free print something. Yeah, it would have been easier, but I want something that lasts. But I tell you, this thing is smooth, it's quiet, it's just <laughs> wonderful. So hopefully I'll be making some more chips on this one soon.
stud cutting time. Something that I learned when you're cutting threads off of something is if you leave a nut on it, if it gets kind of gnarled up at the end and it's very difficult to get a nut on, if you already have a nut on, once you unthread it, it almost acts like a die when it goes off. So that's why I have that on there. I started machining the bracket with a piece of aluminum that I had cut previously, but it becomes obvious that I needed a bigger piece, so I went and cut off a bigger piece of aluminum. Oops, got to tighten it. Take two. It's real easy to transfer dimensions if you have a 3D printed part already. Okay, we'll take off the smallest dimension first. So I switched to the soft jaws to, you know, starting to get to the place where I don't want to mark it on the, um, for this next line. All right, got that one down. And this last one is gonna be a little bit of a, let's see here, I'll show you here. This last one's got quite a bit to machine off, so I'm gonna go band saw most of that off, make it a little easier. I know this looks weird, but what I'm doing is treating this just like it's a cylinder with that uh, one part that's going around. And I just want to get up to a certain edge because there's a round part on my son's gimbal. And I thought if I can leave a little round spot, it might fit a little bit better. But it turns out that I made a little step on there. It worked out better. This thing is filthy, and I mean, so many guys try that trick of snapping their fingers and cleaning up their lathe, but everybody knows that doesn't work. Just watch. Holy smokes, it worked. Well, guys, now it's time to get on the lathe, uh, I should say the milling attachment, 
And one of the things that I found that makes it pretty easy to get things squared up is to use the one, two, three block and then run it up against the face plate and then kind of tighten it down. And that is real, real close to the 90. Well, I got the other lines marked out there. Um, kind of smoothed out the back. Want to get that flat. And here's something that's interesting. With that way I bored it, you can see there's a little mountain top there, and I knew that wasn't a big deal. I just wanted that radius right there. But uh, I'm going to mill that off now too. And now the last feature, the little cutout there. We're going to cut that thing out. Yes, I do know that this is not rigid. One of the things that I found out about using the mill milling attachment on here is that it is not rigid. So if you take light cuts and tighten up your, your gibs, it does work pretty well. Well, let's see if it fits. After test fitting it on the gimbal, it looks like it needs a little bit of adjustment. So I'm going to adjust it here and a little bit more on the milling attachment. And then it'll be done and ready to go. Those threads barely make it out of there, but that's all it takes to press it up against the body of the gimbal and make it real tight. Ta-da! Guys, sharing a couple of lessons learned. Uh, a, I am smarter than my 16-year-old. I know he doesn't believe that, but... Uh, his uh, 3D printed part has a, quite a bit of flex in it, and that's why I made him the bracket with the aluminum. Uh, I'm always learning uh, better angles and uh, speeds and cuts and feeds, and that's always a good thing. Uh, another lesson learned is try to get some tooling for the good old South Bend, because that baby is a beautiful lathe, and hopefully you'll be seeing a lot more of it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and hope to see you on the next episode of Journey to Journeyman.